hi there. Today I just want to do something a little bit different. I wanted to go through some of the resources and references that I use to help me sort of navigate the whole being vegan thing. So everything from food to health and beauty to sort of where I get vegan news and references for activism, you know, cool websites, that kind of thing. So the first thing that I thought I'd go through, the first area that I thought I'd go through is food. Because obviously everybody thinks about food when you talk about veganism. There's obviously other aspects to it, but food is such a, is such a big part of it. And one of the first places I, I always go to look for recipes just in general, even before becoming vegan, is Pinterest. Obviously Pinterest is a great place to look for all sorts of stuff, but I mostly use it for recipes. It's very easy to, to navigate and just to figure out whether you know what you're looking at is you know, the sort of thing that you should dig further into or not or continue to try to I guess pursue making that recipe so say you know you type in like I did a few weeks ago vegan jackfruit recipes it came up with a whole bunch of stuff about this jackfruit pulled pork and the tuna list salad that I made and it gives you these little placards with a make it symbol on it. Some of them have the make it symbol on it. If they do, it usually gives you just a rundown of ingredients and how long it's going to take to make that recipe. So I just find it an easy way to find new recipes as well as to, to figure out if it's something that I actually want to, want to try or not without doing too much work really. In the next couple of things I'm going to talk about are a couple of cookbooks that were recommended to me by a vegetarian friend and I think that they're they're really just great and the first one is The Kitchen. It's got kind of a funny sort of sweary theme so it's slightly R-rated. You don't probably don't want to let your kids read through this one but the idea with this book is that it's you know, helping people to eat more vegetables by giving them the basics and making sure that everything that they're using in their recipes is very tasty, number one, but also number two, very sort of basic. So it's it's doing this sort of plant-based diet on a budget. I think I'll, I think one of the perceptions about being vegan or being plant-based is that it can be very expensive. And sometimes you do see websites or you do see recipes that it's like, They'll, they'll have some very quote unquote hard to get or exotic ingredients that things that you might never have heard of or just things that are just not really that accessible to anybody who's on any kind of budget. So that, that's why I think this has been a really good addition to my sort of cookbook library is because it does have that aspect to it. It just keeps things very simple and that's one of the things that I know is it's just very important to me it's important to my husband so if we're going to cook something we're not we're not big uh, like sort of fancy cooks we don't like to do things that are too involved but we do like things to taste really good and and this really sort of ticks all of those boxes it's got some really good information about sort of what you should have like you know just sort of as your staple pantry that kind of thing and how to sort of how to sort of you know build on the basics and make some really good good meals the second book that i have is this one and i just find this one to be really really amazing it's the green roasting tin by rukmini oh i probably shouldn't actually say that because i don't know how to pronounce his name but the green roasting tin this cookbook is all about kind of putting a bunch of ingredients spices herbs vegetables whatever into a roasting tin popping it in the oven and voila however many minutes later you've got this really really delicious meal and i have to say that it just it really sort of lives up to the to the height sometimes you get recommendations and you're kind of like yeah i didn't really like it that much every single recipe that i've tried out of this book both myself and uh, my husband who is a fairly he's still a meat eater but he's also a, a very picky meat eater but every single recipe that we've tried out of this we've we've really loved we've sat down eaten it and been like oh this is so delicious so throughout I don't know how many we've tried we've been sort of eating from this book since I received it a little while ago so this one I don't think I can say enough how how much we have really 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 enjoyed the food that has been coming out of out of the recipes in this book so that's another another good one so yeah that's it for food so 
Pinterest, um, Thug Kitchen, and the Brain Roasting Tin. Um, Pinterest, obviously, you know, everybody knows a bit about Pinterest. Um, I know about that myself, but the other two books were a recommendation from a friend and they, they just really, really panned out. The next section that I wanted to talk about was health and beauty. So being cruelty free and your sort of health and um, your beauty products, your sort of skincare, hair care, makeup, all of that stuff, it, it can be kind of a difficult world to navigate. I'm not sure what sort of requirements there are for having for saying that you're cruelty free, but it turns out you can, it, it can be a fairly a fairly vague label. So so companies that will say things like we don't test on animals doesn't necessarily mean that all of the ingredients that it takes to sort of make up whatever product they're putting out haven't been tested on animals. So what I found in in sort of doing a little bit of googling just you know just try just sort of interested in it and seeing different articles about how it can be kind of misleading when companies say that they don't test on animals i found the website cruelty-free-kitty.com now this organization basically do the work of calling the companies and asking direct and specific questions about the products they make, how they make them, their ingredients, whether the ingredients that they use or that they source for making up their products are also not tested on animals. And they've got these lists of, you know, brands that are cruelty free, lists of brands that are not cruelty free. So it just makes it a little bit easier when you're looking to try a new skincare product or you're looking to try some new eyeliner or whatever it is some sort of makeup is it something that is cruelty free not just that they don't test their products on animals but is it cruelty free right down the the supply chain so that's my health and beauty reference or a new wish health and beauty reference that that I've found has been just really helpful in, in navigating whether the products I'm using or will be purchasing are cruelty free Right, so the next section I wanted to go through is kind of, you know, news, activism, and research. And I won't go into too much detail, but I, you know, there are a few things that I have found and things that have been recommended to me as well, you know, along the way just for getting information, doing a little bit of research. It's one thing to sort of, I think, know that what, or know and really feel that what you're doing is quote unquote right or have some conviction about the decision that you're making. I think you're also sort of, I don't want to say obligated, but at least compelled to sort of stay abreast of news and understand some of some of the arguments that support maybe the decision that you're making. These are things that kind of turned my head because I think I think a lot of what people how people perceive vegans or you know people who support a plant-based diet is it the way that they're perceived is as kind of these militant in your face people who you know who, who don't I don't know maybe just don't have the best methods for persuading people to sort of you know join the the movement towards not eating animals or join the movement movement against animal cruelty so a few a, a few things have sort of helped me along the way and a few things that I've just sort of liked to watch and a few things that I've liked to to read and reference along the way I'll say the first thing I have is a book it's it's called eating animals I didn't actually read it I, I listened to like the audiobook by a writer named Jonathan Saffron Four. so this book was recommended to me by the same very well-informed vegetarian who recommended the cookbooks to me. So eating animals is just a lot, it's got a lot of information about uh, factory farming and what factory farming is doing to the environment, what's happening in the whole factory farming industry as far as the way animals are actually treated, the way that you know, what is sort of happening psychologically to the people who are actually working um, in factory farms, what's happening in abattoirs and slaughterhouses. It's, it's a very sort of in-depth 
book of research around the factory farming industry and the impact on the world in general, but also just opened your eyes to kind of what's happening, the suffering that animals that we eat en masse are, are going through, what they're experiencing. I know that there are videos out there and pictures. I know that there's a lot of stuff that's very, you know, graphic and upsetting. And I, I, I think about it and I can't, you know, I can't even, you know, the thought of watching one of these is, is just too much for me. And I know it would be for, for a lot of people. But this book, just the sort of descriptions of what is happening is enough to sort of put the picture in your mind. It's not even, you know, you're not even really getting an actual visual, but it's enough to sort of for you to visualize it in your mind. And, and for me, it did a lot to sort of move me in the direction at first of, of vegetarianism and keep the, the idea that veganism was going to be my goal. You know, it just kept that thought in my head, sort of remembering some of the passages that I read in that book and just sort of the descriptions of, of what's actually happening. So Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Four. So the next reference for, this is really for kind of news, plant-based vegan news is livekindly.co. So they are just a plant-based vegan kind of news site and they just dedicated to sort of providing news about all kinds of stuff. So developments with food, so meat replacements, you get a lot of stuff about celebrity news like vegan celebrities or people supporting vegan brands and veganism in general. A lot of stuff about news and, and research, nutrition, all just all kinds of different things. So I subscribe and you know get updates in all of my social media etc from them and I found that it's a good place just to learn about new things that are happening it's where I found out about a few videos back I was featuring some vegan pastries coming out of of France and it was where I found out about that so it's where I find find out about restaurants or when an established restaurant is coming out with a new vegan product or something that they're going to be selling. I think recently Starbucks added some, some vegan choices to the menu like vegan mac and cheese, which is really good by the way. Yeah, so livekindly.co just for sort of news flashes about all things vegan or all things plant-based. Earthling Ed, I don't know if anybody's heard of this guy, but he, his name is Ed Winters actually, but he goes by Earthling Ed on YouTube and stuff. So he posts all these videos on YouTube. I think he's got, he's got a podcast now. I think he's got a documentary coming out soon. So I don't know like the whole lowdown on this guy, but he, I believe he came, became a vegan about like three or four years ago. And he is just really great for putting forward for engaging with people, engaging with non-vegans or, you know, omnivores, people who are, I don't want to say just omnivores because it's not just eating, although I think that's probably the, the, the biggest argument for, for veganism is that the factory farming industry is just a big mess. But this guy, he's just really good at engaging with non-vegans at a sort of dispassionate level so <laughs> i think what happens a lot of times with something that is such a sort of big and personal decision on both sides so you know those people who are making the choice to not eat meat as well as those people who continue to make the choice to eat meat you know it's all it's 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 such a sort of divisive it can be such a divisive topic and i think that what Arthling ed is Ed does, I think he acknowledges that this is, it's a difficult choice to face and it's a difficult decision to make. And sometimes it's difficult to maybe have somebody throwing in your face that you're doing something that is potentially morally wrong, depending on, you know, what your sort of moral standards are. He's, he's just very good at having a more intellectual discussion with people and not getting too excited uh, about what he's talking about, not too, getting too caught up in his emotions and doing the research and really knowing exactly what he's talking about. I've seen quite a few videos with him where he's just, you know, like, just engage with me, just talk with me. And I think I'd, I'd probably 
couldn't have, well, I definitely couldn't have the sort of level of intellectual discourse that he has. And I probably can't have, you know, I couldn't have all those facts and numbers um, at the ready, but I do enjoy just sort of watching him at least as a role model, because I think that a lot of what I'm probably trying to do is engage with people. I, I, I want to document my experience. I want it to be, I want this to be about how I'm navigating through having made this decision. But I, I also hope that it sparks some interesting and some productive conversations. I am 41 years old. It took me until the beginning of this year to make this decision. So I have an understanding that it's a difficult decision to make. I think, you know, I think it's taken me even since kind of asking myself those questions about what am I doing and why am I, why I'm doing certain things and why haven't I just sort of just gone ahead and just flipped the switch and said that's it I'm not doing this it's it's taken I have to acknowledge that it's taken a long time and I think that the more willing I am to sort of be I don't want to say be patient with because that sounds very patronizing but just be open about my own decision and be willing to talk about it hopefully the the more it will get gears turning the way that in the same way that it, it it happened for me. You know, I went through my own sort of defensiveness about the whole thing when confronted by somebody who wasn't eating meat about it or when asked questions about it. I went through my whole kind of feeling affronted and offended that anybody would question, you know, my morality or my sense of right and wrong. But, you know, it really did start, it started the process of thinking about it and making a change even if that change took a year and a half or I say a year and a half but that cha change took you know 40 years really really to make yeah so those are some places that I look to for information and just some inspiration as well so uh, hopefully that list of things about you know food health and beauty news and activism is helpful to you hopefully it's something that you check out they are things that i reference pretty often nowadays so hopefully that is helpful to you and you know you get some some value from that as well okay thanks have a good one